there's no such thing as an objective gadget review. The only truly objective review we should expect is someone just reading the specs off the side of the box. And I trust you're smart enough to go to GSM Arena and pick through all of those hardware details for yourself. A writer, reviewer likes one experience over another, and that's going to color their commentary. That's going to color their perception of every gadget they review. So I think it's pretty important. I think it's vital that we join this conversation uh, just being honest about what particular bias or perspective we might have when entering into a review. Instead of trying to pretend like I can somehow be a, a truly objective machine of no feelings or bias, I'm just going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to lay my cards on the table and hear the things I like and hear the things that concern me. To start, I think it's also important to share my goals, what I try to achieve whenever I review any type of product. Most important, A number one, with a bullet, does this product live up to the manufacturer's claims? Marketing will make a lot of boasts and brags about what a particular gadget can do, and it's through my usage I need to determine whether or not that product lives up to those expectations. Secondly, I work really hard to try and figure out who the product is for. I truly have never found that magical unicorn gadget which is a great fit for everybody. Lifestyle technology is really expensive. We work hard for our money and we spend a lot of it on these gadgets. So I try to determine who would be the right fit for this product, make sure it's the right fit for them, rather than playing the game of, well, it's the popular product, so it's probably going to be good enough for you. And then third, that's where I filter all of that information through my own personal likes and dislikes, my opinions on what makes for a good gadget, a good experience, a, a good product, and then that's how I usually wrap up my conclusions. If you've been keeping up with my videos and I've been producing content over the last seven years on several different channels, then I think you would have a pretty good understanding of what I like and what I don't and why I bring up certain points in my reviews. Of course, that's a lot of content to chew through and if you're coming to my channel pretty fresh, you shouldn't have to do that. With a focus on phones, here are the things I like. Here's my bias. In general, I tend to prefer Android over iOS. Even though iOS has improved on a number of the multitasking and file management issues that I've had with the platform, I still generally prefer the flexibility and customization that Google software provides me. That being said, I still think Microsoft was the most elegant and most accessible user interface we've ever had on a mobile device. Also, loosely playing into the Android versus iOS comparison, and then why I tend to prefer some Android manufacturers manufacturers over others, I'm definitely more of a hardware guy than a software guy. I've been very frustrated with the current state of Android updates. I think iOS does this much better, and the entire process seems fundamentally broken. The relationship between manufacturers, carriers, Google, and customers. And I lay that on Google's feet. I think it's Google's responsibility to fix that chain so that we get more timely updates. Consumers get the benefit of bug fixes, security patches, and full-on operating system improvements. I most certainly covet the iOS upgrade experience. I really wish we had that on Android, but it's the hardware which also weighs in heavily on keeping me in the Android ecosystem. How manufacturers try to differentiate themselves from their competition, all those different pieces and parts, all the experiences that you can craft, and all the different demographics of consumer that you can focus on. For that wide variety of hardware experiences, there are a couple trends which have been concerning me of late. I do not like glass back phones. This is not new. This is a trend I've been commenting on since the iPhone 4 and 4S, something that popped up a lot in my commentary for the Galaxy S6. S6 Edge and Note 5 era of devices. However, I still don't feel glass is the most practical material for a phone when it comes to lifestyle and day-to-day -day use. It's always smudged. I'm constantly wiping it on my shirt, even shooting this review. I had to make a choice between wiping it down in between every shot or just showing it off with fingerprints. Glass feels nice, but it's a slippery material, which isn't very reassuring on a phone this size and this expensive. Funnily, in trying to satisfy my vanity in cleaning off smudges, I've almost dropped it several times after cleaning it off of my shirt. Like the S6 before, this is a phone I do not like using out in public without a case, where the Note 4 and most other flagships I tend to use naked. The new galaxies all but require a case or skin to improve grip and keep the phone looking cleaner. This begs the question of why we design these beautiful 
Apple devices if we have to keep them covered, but I digress. I don't think glass is a premium material. I think it's just shiny. Metal edge devices with some sort of grippy material on the back I think has been the pinnacle of lifestyle, practical smartphone design. No phone has survived the kind of abuse that I've lobbed at the V10 as gracefully with steel rails in this grippy back. I mean, one of the most brutally durable phones ever made to glass on glass, and this is how I have to leave the house with my V30. But you don't ever get to see my V30. An LG G4 with this ox blood leather back is super trick. My custom Moto X2 with a blue leather back, red accents, and a white front face. My Captain America phone, still one of the most elegant devices in my collection. And more recently, spending some time with a BlackBerry Key One, a phone that feels like it was made for grown-ups. I like practicality, and I like those features actually benefiting, servicing the user experience. Why I think the active line of phones from Samsung represent the best phones that they manufacture. Not that you don't need to throw a case on this phone, that the case is sort of built into the chunky body of this device. It also means you get the smaller screened Samsung with the largest battery that they put into any phones. These are things that we say we think we care about. Battery life, really extending that runtime. And here's a perfect example of doing that well. And they're usually not the best received or best reviewed gadgets because they're not the thinnest and they're not the shiniest. And a quick note on those smaller screens, I love a good one thumb smartphone. I think it's the smaller iPhones that still represent the best translation of iOS to actually going out into the world and getting your work done. And for Android users, the Xperia XZ1 Compact, a little mighty mouse of a phone, this pint-sized powerhouse still is a regular player in my lineup. And it's on the Sony, and, and I gotta say, I'm not a big fan of this conversation that we've been having for years now, over fetishizing ever smaller and thinner and diminishing bezels. Bezels don't detract from the phone experience for me. And in fact, I think there are a lot of benefits that come from having a little bit of extra space on a device that you can build in features like better cameras, stereo speakers, or just have better drop protection. Again, not a new trend for me. This is something I've been commenting on for years now. I'm actually not for having ridiculously small bezels on devices. Now hear me out because a lot of people seem to get really frustrated when a tablet or a phone has these ugly black bordering bezels that, you know, just takes up so much of the front face and makes it, that makes the screen look so much smaller. This no bezel fetish culminating in a trend where we actually cut into parts of the display, supposedly the display being one of the most important aspects of a phone so that we can still house things like an earpiece speaker or a selfie camera. I use my screen a lot more than I use my selfie camera. So having a tiny strip a forehead bezel at the top of the phone is not a deal breaker. Lastly, wrapping up my personal bias, I get really excited about devices that offer a truly specific experience for a particular demographic. I like phones with focus. As previously mentioned, if you want that really killer one-handed experience, it's gonna probably come from a smaller phone. Or maybe you're not as concerned about having the best multimedia or gaming experience, but you really want a killer communicator, and something like the BlackBerry Key One starts making a lot of sense for that conversation. The Note series with the S Pen offering up a unique way to handle and interact with your phone. Phones that offer up truly unique camera experiences or near professional grade manual modes so that you can really tailor, you can really create something with the gadget that lives in your pocket. And I come from a background in voiceover casting, voiceover directing, spoken word recording. I have a soft spot in my heart for those phones that offer up the best audio experience that you can treat your ears to. So those are the things I like. Those are the things that concern me. And now that you know, I am a living, breathing human being with feelings and thoughts and opinions. Obviously, this means you can no longer trust any video that I put out there because I'm obviously a fanboy and a hater. No, not all that. You guys know what the trick is. You know how this game is played. And obviously, I think the best way for people to go about consuming tech videos is to pull information from a variety of producers 
all understanding the different filters that each of those producers is using for each of their individual biases, and then use all that information to come to your own conclusion about what you like and what you don't. Really, that's the thing that matters the most, is that we're all joining this conversation with some degree of internal consistency, that we're not just flipping on individual ideas because a manufacturer we liked before is doing something different now, and we're joining the conversation honestly, and that way we have some sort of bedrock that we can all agree on what reality is. That's what's been easiest for me is that I don't have to try and shift my talking points based on being a fan of a specific manufacturer. Five years ago, I told you I didn't like glass back phones and I still don't today. So I don't have to trade that up when a manufacturer I do like has switched over to glass for the rear of their phone. It's just unfortunate that for the flagship smartphone marketplace today, I don't have any <laughs> options to trade that out now. They're all glass. Are we being honest and are we being internally consistent? And it's not to say that I haven't changed my mind on certain features or certain aspects of the mobile gadget landscape, but there are a couple trends where I haven't had to deviate from my personal preferences. Ultimately, what I just want us to be careful about is this trend of reviews as entertainment, the infotainment that we produce this content for. When I got into this game originally, it really was about education. Well, now the marketplace is really well educated and we're often more going to these videos to confirm a purchase we've already made, not to be educated about what purchase we might want to make. I'm having issues on YouTube with my audience, with notifications, with SEO and with monetization. And I would imagine that a lot of producers, especially producers at my tier, are facing similar issues. And when we find those problems on one platform, on YouTube, it's really easy to fall back and only produce content that we know is already going to be popular with the largest audience segments and with search engine tools. If we're concerned about the gadget landscape starting to feel a bit stale, it's creating that echo chamber where things that are already popular continue being popular and it's harder for smaller players to break through that SEO juggernaut is only going to contribute. It's only going to exacerbate that feeling that our phones are getting stale. That echo chamber all but guarantees the products that are already popular are predestined to continue winning. And that also means for those individuals out there who really are trying to educate themselves about a future purchase, how to spend their money, it's a responsibility I take very seriously. Again, I want to see if I can try and find the exact right fit gadget for you. Lifestyle technology is too expensive to get something which is pretty much good enough. And you really don't want to miss out on that fit because a bunch of really slick YouTube producers have decided that only three phones are going to be worth it for the monies and every other phone maker, well, better luck next year, uh, maybe next time. I enjoy making entertaining videos. I really like making controversial videos. But for the gadgets themselves, there really is no black and white, worth it, not worth it, thumbs up, thumbs down, binary kind of meritocracy. Everything is a delightful shade of gray. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Just something I feel like I needed to get off my chest. I've got some really cool content coming up for you folks soon. Links below this video, how you can support production on this channel, including checking out my Patreon page. For those of you asking, as I've been transitioning out of pocket now, another topic I'm going to be handling in a separate vlog, probably next week. Uh, you know, I'm moving some of my production back to this channel, and then I'm also going to be moving some exclusives over to that Patreon page, like my audio reviews, my camera deep dive reviews, Reviews. Main reviews are still going to be public on this channel. The overall gadget experience is still going to be accessible here, but the Patreon is where we're going to dig deep and get into that nitty gritty. Otherwise, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy, and I will catch you all on the next video.